Hey, welcome back to the farmstead. If this is your first video, we're a small family farm in southeastern Tennessee. We grow vegetables that we sell at the farmer's market. And we have some bees and some honey, and uh, we have uh, uh, fruit trees. We've got some apple trees and some blueberry bushes and some uh, blackberry bushes. But uh, uh, the reason for this video was somebody asked me if we should till, which is better, tilling or plowing? And I've got some video. I plowed their gardens and I got through just a few minutes ago, a couple hours ago. And uh, uh, we're going to show you that video, just a little snippet of us plowing the garden. plowing or uh, tilling and my answer to that is you need both you need the tilling to prepare your seed bed right for your seed bed correctly but you also need plowing because if you just till I've got a little flat board I mean a brown board here I don't have a white board but as you till the, your tiller rotates around this way and it'll slap in the same place and it'll pack this ground down right here and cause this little layer right here to get really hard it'd be hard pan is what they call it so when you plant your vegetables right here they can't penetrate it so what I do I come down this I, I got my tiller set probably about six inches so I still till six inches here so at the end of the year I come back or the start of the next year like I did this year I come back with my plow and my plow is about 16 inches so it goes pretty deep a lot deeper than this and it turns that dirt up this way gets rid of that hard pan so when you come back and till again like we're fixing to do it uh, gets rid of that and you've got a, a, a good seed bed and we have to till the way we plant and you'll see plenty of videos on that because we, uh, we we lay a mulch with a mulch layer and it's got to be good and we also till I also like tilling because if you till at certain times or several times at the right moments it'll get rid of a lot of your weed problems like uh, in our upper garden, I did a little experiment where I just tilled a couple of days apart, and then the other part I tilled like 10 days apart several times. So I've got a little clip of that, and we'll show that right here. a lot of your questions about uh, which is better tilling or plowing and I think you need to do both uh, I mean like if you're in your at your house and you hire somebody to come by and till it and it's in the same spot a year after year after year and a lot of it depends on your soil it, it's eventually going to get hard down there you're not going to have a very good garden but uh, you can run a subsoiler down on it you don't have to plow that make a little subsoiler that you can put it back here and you can run through there and that's what I'm going to do in the high tunnels eventually but uh, anyway, uh, if you have any cool questions about that or some comments, and if you don't agree with me, you know, you can leave it down below or you can send me an email and I'll try to help or answer any questions you can. But I'm going to take you out back here to the, uh, and show you the strawberries we got going. I mean, they look fantastic. So let's go back there and check them out. Okay, we're out here at the little strawberry patch and I've got 200 plants in these two rows and I've got 100 plants in those two rows over there. I planted those last spring. I planted these in the fall. These are Ruby June, they're organic, and I got them from a place out in North Carolina. Matter of fact, my tomato plants are coming from, from them. They'll be shipping Tuesday in a couple of days. So we got some big times coming. I mean, a lot of, a lot of activities gonna be next week or two. But anyway, these plants look fantastic. I haven't even fertilized them yet. So I, I need to get on the stick, get some down here and fertilize them. But these right here, look at them. So get a close up of these.
And this side over here, the, the storm we had the other night blew part of this plastic up, so I'm gonna get some straw and put down here on these and when they get a little bit bigger. It's all right right now, but man, they look fantastic. We're gonna have a lot of good strawberries and we basically make, we're probably gonna just make jam out of this because we've got a recipe and it's, it's out, out of this world. We make it, sell it at the farmer's market. Let's, let's look at these over here. I just covered some of these up with straw and got it all off. Now yet. these plants here and these two rows, we bought those from a, and they were bare rooted. And when they got here, I put them in a little pot like you get at the nursery and let them sit there for a little while and they took root and then we planted these last last spring. So they shouldn't really bear this year. And I, these look great down through here. I haven't fertilized these either. And uh, uh, I can't remember the name of these. I'll have to look it up, but uh, I'll look it up and let you know. But we got some other things to do today. We're gonna to move our meat chickens out on pasture and uh, we'll, got a little, we'll show you how do we do that. We got another little surprise and you can see the little baby goat. So let's go move them chickens. Hey, we was just out here looking at strawberries. And I looked over at this beehive and I was getting ready to tear this bee, this bee stand down and move it up towards the house. And we think a swarm has moved in there. See if you get a picture of those bees coming in and out. I think they've took, a, took over that. What a blessing, right? <laughs> so anyway, I'll let y'all know. I'll, I'll let y'all know. I, we're, I'm just tickled to death. Uh, this is real time, too. This is real life. <laughs> we don't script nothing. As a matter of fact, we just film on an iPhone, so we just go like we like, like it's a normal day. But anyway, uh, I'll keep an eye on that. We might have a free beehive, a uh, bee colony coming. Well, that, that's going to be great for us. But, uh, uh, we've got some coming by the mail this week, and uh, I'll probably try to film that. And, uh, of course, we lost all our bees this winter. We had a rough winter with them, so we're starting over. But maybe we're going to get a head start. Maybe we lucked out. Okay, let's go move the chickens. Hey, we're out here. We're fixing to uh, move our meat birds into our chicken tractor, and this is a uh, Salatin style. And of course, I built it a little different now. Uh, it's mostly out of scrap uh, wood and some scrap tin I had laying around there. And we can put about, most we've had in here is 40 birds. But you could easily put 75 or 80 birds in this thing. But most we've ever done at once is 40. And we've only got seven today. But uh, I want to show you this, this chicken water. Don't waste your money on it. It ain't no good. I've lost the thing on it and it's hard to fill up. It's just junk. But uh, this right here works out good, so uh, we'll go ahead and see if we can catch these birds and get them in here and get them on some grass. And uh, of course, this is our chicken brooder, and uh, we made this out of an old crate. We raised a lot of little chicks in this thing. It works really good for us. And uh, I take the tractor and I bring it out to where we're going to go with them, and uh, you don't have to put them in crates and everything. It seems to be a lot easier, but. Uh, I can't remember why I put this metal roof on it. I might take it off and use it somewhere else just to put plywood on it. But anyway, let's catch some chickens and put them in here. Okay, we'll go get them some food and some water and uh, we'll be right back. I 
Now these feeders, I love these feeders. These are called the turbo feeder, and they work really good. They, they dispense the food evenly around the little tray there. But they work out really good. I've got two or three of those. Now these things are only about two and a half weeks old, so they got their feathers out. I usually don't put them out when it's as cold as it is today, but uh, we got a little reason. I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, the only reason we're doing seven, we usually do a little more, but we got these up here at the Rural King. They're the same price as when we get been getting them. And they're from a different hatchery. I, I wanted to try that hatchery and see what they turn out. Uh, the ones we got last year from a different hatchery, uh, we weren't too pleased with them. They didn't grow out good and the meat didn't look good. But uh, anyway, we're just trying them out and see, and we'll let you know how it goes. And we don't sell none of this stuff. It's just for us. We grow a lot of our own food here, so it's just chickens that we eat. So, All right, let me go show you the reason we got to clean out the brooder. The reason we had to clean out the, the brooders because we didn't find them today. We got some Americanas. They're supposed to lay a blue egg. My wife seen them and said we got to get them. So we got them. So we're going to put these in the brooder. They are pretty looking. Almost look like a little quail or something. But I got the brooder cleaned out and everything. Got some got the food thing cleaned out and the water thing cleaned out. It's all clean. And I did wash my hands there before I got these because of the that bird flu going around, so we got to be kind of careful. But anyway, let's go put them in there and see how they do. Now, one thing I do do, I put apple cider vinegar in the water, and that kind of gives them like a an electrolyte boost, so that's one thing I do do. <laughs> we want to thank everybody for giving suggestions and names and everything for their little goat. Uh, what we decided to do is uh, my uh, camera person back here is an elementary school teacher. And she let her kids pick out several names, and we picked out three that we bet that we like best, and they're gonna vote on it uh, Monday, and then we'll reveal on our next video what the name is. So we want to thank everybody for suggestions and everything, and we'll see what it turns out. I guess we'll end the video here, and uh, if you like it, subscribe, give us a like. It don't cost anything to subscribe; it's absolutely free. You know, it does help us spread our message around a little bit better if you do subscribe. So. Uh, we'll catch you on the next one.